assuming that the waxed up dentures were approved at the clinical stage of trial insertion, we are now ready to proceed with the next technical stage. This involves a procedure responsible for converting the wax on the trial dentures into acrylic resin. An essential prerequisite to the flasking procedure involves a final overall check of the dentures to ensure that the teeth are fixed firmly in their denture bases and the surfaces of the teeth are free from extraneous wax deposits. The dentures are then looted down onto their respective casts in order to prevent the infiltration of investment plus between the cast and the denture base. A final superficial trimming may be necessary to remove extraneous wax deposits situated on the land areas of the casts before proceeding with the next stage in the flasking process. The articulator mounting plates are removed by prying them off their casts with the aid of a plaster knife. The actual principle of denture processing consists of converting the wax denture base into acrylic resin. This is achieved by making a two-part plaster mould contained within a metal denture processing flask. The first part of the mould is designed to contain both denture and cast. This is achieved via a process known as investing. Part 2 completes the mould, thus entrapping the teeth and recording all of the relevant surface detail on the polished surfaces of the denture. This process is known as topping. Stage 3 involves the removal of the wax leaving the teeth attached to the second part of the mould. The mould is then sealed with a liquid separating medium 
before the void created by the removal of the wax is filled with acrylic resin dough. The mould is then held firmly together under pressure and heated slowly in a water bath over a period of approximately 14 hours until the acrylic resin has polymerized via an addition reaction. Both mounting plaster and casts are reduced in size by the use of a cast trimmer so as to facilitate their correct positioning within the denture flasks. Great care must be taken to keep the fingers away from the cutting wheel when trimming the casts down to their required size. A visual check is made of the modified casts before they are tried into the shallow half of the flasks. They are then soaked in a bowl of cold water. A small amount of petroleum jelly is applied to the inside of both halves of each flask to facilitate easy removal of the dentures on completion of the processing procedure. The investment stage begins by making a mix of plaster made to the usual proportions which is poured into the shallow half of each of the flasks. The dentures are then positioned into the plaster so that their peripheral edges are level with the brim of the flask. A slight posterior tilt is also desirable. Both dentures are tilted so that the posterior regions are slightly lower than the anterior areas. This is done to avoid damaging the solid plaster mould on opening the flask at the boiling out stage. A small amount of plaster is placed around the heels of the lower to eliminate unwanted undercuts. Extra care is taken to eliminate undercuts and smooth around the distal of the lower denture as this area tends to be a potential weak point during the opening of the flask. The investment plaster is smoothed up under running water and all extraneous plaster is removed from both flask and denture with a small brush.
flasks are allowed to stand for approximately 15 minutes until the plaster has reached its initial set. A plaster separator, such as sodium alginate solution, is then applied to all the plaster surfaces of the investment half of the mould, carefully avoiding contact with the acrylic teeth. A mix of plaster and artificial stone in a ratio of one to one is spatulated to a smooth creamy consistency. A small amount of mix is then applied to the exposed surfaces of the dentures with the fingers in an effort to record all of the surface detail and also to evacuate air bubbles which are liable to become trapped between the teeth. The vault of the palate in the upper denture is then carefully filled in such a way as to exclude air pocket formation. The remaining plaster stone mix is then poured into the opposing halves of the denture flasks until they are overfilled. This avoids air pockets when the halves of the flasks are closed together. All extraneous plaster is then removed with the fingers, followed by a very quick, careful rinse under running water. The word careful is stressed because it is possible to wash out the soft plaster from inside of the flask if it is left under the tap for too long. Both flasks are then placed under pressure until the stone plaster has set. This prevents the flask from opening slightly due to the setting expansion of the plaster stone mix. After approximately 30 to 40 minutes, the flasks are removed from the press and placed into the boiling out unit for five minutes in order to soften the wax denture bases and hence facilitate the opening of the flasks without damaging the plaster mould.
At the end of the five minute period, the flasks are removed from the boiling water and carefully opened by inserting a plaster knife between the two halves of the denture flasks. On opening, both halves of the flasks are inspected and the softened wax and shellac base plates are carefully removed without disturbing the acrylic teeth. All four halves of the flasks are then exposed to a constant stream of boiling water containing an emulsifying agent. After approximately two to three minutes, the flasks are again removed. More water and detergent applied with a hand spray may be necessary to ensure that all wax and loose plaster are removed from the moulds. A final close inspection of the moulds is necessary before a coat of sodium alginate seal is applied to the plaster surfaces. It is desirable, though not always possible, to avoid coating the acrylic teeth with the separating medium. This tends to occur while the separator has been applied incidentally. Separator is also applied to the opposite half of the flask that contains the cast. A 
A second coat of separator may be applied if desired, though this is not essential in the majority of cases. The next stage involves the mixing of carefully measured proportions of acrylic resin. This is used to fill the space formerly occupied by the wax. The denture flasks are arranged so that the resin may be easily packed into the moulds once it has reached its optimum consistency. The type of acrylic resin used in this process is supplied as a fine powdered polymer. A measured quantity of monomer, approximately 12 cc per average size denture, is poured into a mixing vessel. The polymer, measured in a ratio of 3 to 1, is then gradually sifted in. The mix is stirred until all of the free monomer has been absorbed by the polymer granules. The resultant mix has a wet sand consistency. The resin is covered and left for approximately 10 to 15 minutes, depending on ambient room temperature, until it reaches a dough-like state. A portion of the resin is then taken out of the vessel and manipulated between the fingers in order to distribute the pig pigment throughout its mass. The homogeneous ball of dough is then pressed into the sealed mould until it is filled. This point cannot be stressed too strongly as insufficient resin would result in the processed denture becoming completely porous. The technical term used to describe this condition is called contraction porosity. A single polythene separating sheet is applied between the resin and the cast. This is to facilitate the reopening of the flask after the excess resin has been squeezed out of the mould. Both flasks are then placed into a hydraulic press. A gradually increasing pressure is then applied until all of the excess resin has been extruded. Great care must be taken at this stage. An excessively rapid increase in pressure would force the teeth down into their investment plaster, or in some cases break the plaster mould completely.
the acrylic filled flasks are squeezed together until the pressure gauge indicates 100 bar, approximately equal to 1000 newtons per centimeter squared. The pressure is then released and both flasks are removed from the press. Notice how the reopening of the flasks is facilitated by the temporary placement of the polythene sheets which acts as a non-stick barrier between the porous casts and the thixotropic acrylic dough. The sheet also acts as a seal so as to prevent evaporation of the monomer, which would result in there being insufficient monomer to unite the polymer beads together during the subsequent processing of the resin. Removal of the loose sodium alginate seal that has become detached from the cast during the pressing up procedure is necessary to avoid its incorporation in the processed denture base material. A final application of separator is then applied to the cast. The polythene sheet is removed and all surplus acrylic is removed from the periphery of the denture.
the mold is then closed so as to re-establish a positive metal-to-metal -metal contact between both halves of the flask. A constant pressure is maintained during the polymerization procedure. This is achieved by placing the flasks in a spring-loaded clamp. The function of the spring, located inside the threaded screw section, is to allow for fractional opening and closing of the flask due to thermal expansion and subsequent cooling contraction of the resin during processing. The denture flasks and clamp are then placed into a water-filled processing bath. It is desirable to select a slow curing cycle since this produces a strong denture base with minimal stresses incorporated. A slow cooling period is vital in this respect. The curing cycle selected in this case involves a slow initial rise in temperature taking 11 to 12 hours to reach 100 degrees Celsius, followed by a two-hour boiling temperature. The resin is then allowed to cool in the bath down to approximately room temperature before the dentures are deflasked. After cooling, both flasks are removed from the clamp and the dentures are then deflasked and subsequently divested of their plaster moulds. Great care must be taken when knocking the plaster mould out of their flasks as acrylic has a low impact resistance and hence is prone to fracture if the operator is a little over enthusiastic when deflasking. Provided the insides of the flasks were lubricated prior to flasking, separation of the flask and mould should not be a problem. Removal of the plaster mould is facilitated by making a series of cuts to weaken the plaster around the periphery of the mould. A sharp twist of the blade of the plaster knife is all that is required to split the mould and separate it from the denture. The cast may also be removed by using the same technique. Notice the relatively small amount of residual flash, which should resemble tissue paper.
the process is repeated for the lower denture before moving on to the next stage, which involves the removal of all excess acrylic resin.